Hi everybody, Matt Dobler here. I assume most of you know me, but I also think that there's a chance that some people that don't work for our firm might have stumbled into this video. So if anybody has, let me just introduce myself. My name is Matt Dobler. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Probanic and Probanic in Pittsburgh. What I have for us to look at today is a quick little spreadsheet that I've built that I call our settlement calculator. There's really nothing fancy to it and it's not doing any math that's um, earth shattering, but it puts all the calculations together in one place and it makes thinking through some of these calculations quick, which is good because for people like me, I have a tough time doing math quickly in my head. So let's jump straight into it. Um, I'm gonna take us just to a typical web browser. Um, for Probanic and Probanic attorneys, if you go to the intranet, you'll see that we've got it right down here. It's called Settlement Calculator. Uh, anybody who, again, might have stumbled onto this video uh, inadvertently, you will not have access to our firm's intranet. Um, I would imagine that you wouldn't have found this video if somebody hadn't also sent you a link to the Settlement Calculator. Um, if you have found this video and you want a copy of the Settlement Calculator, feel free to send me an email. My email address is mdobler at probanic.com. That's M-D-O-E-B-L-E-R at probanic.com. And I will be happy to send you a link to the Settlement Calculator. All right, so let's go into it. Probanic and Probanic Attorneys, you can just click right on it in the intranet. And here we are. Now, there's a lot on this spreadsheet and it looks a little intimidating at first. There's lots of different colors. It's um, It's overwhelming. We're going to break it down step by step and I'm going to explain exactly what everything's going on here and it's going to be very simple. So don't worry too much about it. But let's start with an understanding of this blue box that says before entering any data into the sheet, please save a copy by selecting file, make a copy from the menu above. Basically what this is saying is that the link on our intranet is coming to this sheet. If you enter data on this sheet, then when the next person follows the link to this sheet, they're gonna see your data. So number one, it's gonna be confusing for them, but more importantly, number two, when you go back and try to find that data, it's gonna be gone because they're gonna have overwritten it. So the first thing you wanna do when you get here is you wanna go up to the file menu and you wanna select make a copy. Now, before I do that, let me just point out that there are two menu bars when we're doing uh, anything in Google Docs. There's this menu bar along the top here, right underneath the name of the document. And then there's also a file bar, uh, file, a menu bar, excuse me, that's above the main windows to the upper left of your screen. And I, you, you're not seeing it on the screen here, uh, but it's up to the, just to the right of the Apple menu in the upper left hand corner of your screen. And there is usually a file menu up there as well. So you wanna make sure you're using the correct file menu down here and you're going to say, make a copy. Now we're gonna change the name of this to settlement calculator for, and we'll put in whatever the name of our client is. Um, I'll just make up a generic one here, Smith, settlement calculator for Smith. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna save this. I'm not gonna go into the details of exactly what's happening on Drive because it's the, beyond the scope of this video, but. For now, just understand that we're saving this to your drive, which is accessible in your Gmail account that we have through the firm and Google Apps. Um, if you have more questions about exactly where that's going, let me know and we'll, we'll, um, we'll sort that out from there. But let's assume that you just changed the name of the sheet, uh, Settlement Calculator for Smith. Now it's gonna open a new copy of that sheet in either a new tab or a new window, depending on how your browser preferences are set. Um, I'm glad that it's a new, new tab here so that I can show you. We've got the original one, which is the one we came into. We're not going to change this one. This is Settlement Calculator Template, and we can actually go ahead and close that one. And then the other one that we've got is Settlement Calculator for Smith. This is where we're going to enter our data. Okay. Now, going down from the top of the sheet to the bottom, at the top here, I've just got um, you know, my contact information. And again, if you're watching this video and you didn't have access to our intranet, Here's a copy of my email address. Feel free to send me an email and I'll get you a copy of this sheet. Um, below this is this, this blue box that we just talked about uh, that explains making sure that you save it. Because I wanna try to explain stuff and I wanna focus attention on things, I'm gonna hide things that are unnecessary. So for right now, I'm just gonna hide those two rows so that we don't get confused by them. And we start to draw our attention to what's going on here. The bottom line is that in the left of the screen, we have the settlement calculator, and in the right of the screen, 
we have a log of the demand and offer history. I'll come back to the demand and log history. So for now, I'm just going to hide these rows. Whoops. So I'll hide these columns, I should say. And let's focus our attention just on this part that's on the left of the screen, which is the settlement calculator. Now there's two columns in the settlement calculator, the basic calculator and the reverse calculator. I think you probably already understand what's going on here, but again, let's just focus on what's going on on the basic calculator. Now you see, I just tried to hide the reverse column and I got this warning, heads up, you're trying to edit a part of this sheet that shouldn't be changed accidentally, edit anyway. I'm gonna explain what all the colors mean here in terms of what you're allowed to edit and what you're not allowed to edit. But there are some places where when you try to edit it, the sheet is going to let you edit it, but it's gonna throw a warning and say, do you understand that what you're doing is probably something that you wanna be careful with? So just keep an eye on this. We'll see this again in a second. Um, but for now we can play, say okay. And again, you shouldn't even be hiding anything. I'm just doing that for sake of illustration. All right, so now we've got what is the basic calculator. This is really the nuts and bolts of this whole thing, okay? So it's just this column under basic. And all this is gonna do is we're gonna enter in a settlement amount, we're gonna enter in some variables, and it's gonna throw back for us the amount that the client will take home in the client net, okay? The bottom line here is that on this whole sheet, cells that are green are cells that you can play with. You can change the numbers, you can uh, tinker with them, and that's kind of the idea, is that you're gonna change the numbers in the green, the green cells. So let's say we start off with um, a settlement amount of $100,000. You see it does some calculations here. It does a calculation that says that on a 40% attorney fee, the attorney's fees in dollars will be $40,000, which means that the client gross before any deduction for costs or liens will be $60,000. Uh, again, we've entered the number in here and the yellow box at the bottom, that's sort of the, the answer, the number that you wanna take home. So you've entered in $100,000 and the answer is $60,000. We can change that, again, the green box is something that we can play with, so we can say instead of $100,000, let's say $90,000, and obviously it'll throw back a client net of $54,000. That's simple, okay? Um, let's skip the attorney's fees percentage for a second. Um, and let's look at the box below it, which is amount of attorney's fees. This is a red box because this is not a cell that you can change in this spreadsheet. This is a cell that is a calculated figure and you can't change it. If you want to change the amount of the attorney's fees, the way to do that is to change this box that is the attorney's fees percentage. So it's set to a default of 40%, um, but certainly there are instances where we adjust our fee. So let's say we're gonna take that 40% and we're gonna change it to 33 and a third. Just highlight that 40% cell and type 33.33 and press enter and you're gonna get this warning again. This warning is saying you're trying to edit a part of this sheet that shouldn't be changed accidentally. Do you know what you wanna do? And now you can say yes. It's gonna say, okay, we've changed the fee percentage from 40% to 33 and a third and as a result, our attorney's fees have changed as well. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put this at 40 because that makes me feel more comfortable. It's gonna ask me if I wanna do that. I'm gonna say yes. All right, so we've discussed that we can't change what's in the red boxes. So the amount of the attorney's fees and the client gross are fixed and they're calculated as a function of the settlement amount and the attorney's fees percentage. The next box is the costs and this is something that's also fairly straightforward. This is something that right now you need to enter in. Maybe in a future iteration of this spreadsheet, we'll make it so that it can automatically be calculated based on looking at the cost sheet, but that link has not been made yet, so the costs need to be manually entered in. Let's say in this case that we have costs of $5,000. We type in 5,000 and press enter. Now note, before I go any further, that I didn't have to type in the dollar sign, the comma, or the decimal place. Uh, Google Sheets will automatically calculate that for you, so just type the number in and press enter. Now also notice that we've gone, if we go zero, we've gone from $54,000 
to $49,000, which is taking into account these costs. So once we enter the costs, our yellow box at the bottom, remember the yellow box is the answer, that's sort of highlighted in yellow, it's the answer to the whole thing. The answer has gone down because the client net has been reduced by the $5,000 in costs, all right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, lean one, lean two, lean three, also self-explanatory. You're gonna enter in an amount of a lean here. So let's say that our costs are $5,000. You've got a uh, $3,000 Medicare lien and you've got a um, $1,000 private health insurance lien. Um, when you enter those in, again, the client net, the bottom line, the answer just keeps getting, getting reduced. Now, one thing to note here, you can't change much here, but if you wanna change these labels so that you can keep all of this in track, that's pretty easy to do. Just change lien one, we said it was a Medicare lien. So you can change that and we said lean two was a private lien. So you can change that. Um, if you don't have a third lien, just leave it set to zero and you can leave this here. I wouldn't tinker with that. Um, if you're really a, a stickler for getting rid of that row, we could talk about how to do that. But for now, if it's, it's fine if all you have is a zero here and, something, and nothing here. Um, one of the things I kind of recommend is that these things that are in orange these are things that, that you want to calculate before you go to the mediation. And again, they're, they're going to be fairly fixed. I mean, you might be changing them throughout the course of your negotiation and your discussions with your client, but uh, by and large, they're going to stay put um, as the numbers go. Now, let's just talk about what this is doing down here. It's, again, it's, it's nothing fancy. All this is saying is let's take the settlement amount and let's subtract from it the amount of the attorney's fees, the costs, and the liens. And you're coming up with this number. So it's nothing fancy. Once we've done the calculation for the attorney's fees, it's just a simple subtraction problem. And again, all it's doing here is helping us um, come to that answer without having to type a bunch of things into our calculator. Now obviously note that once we've decided what these costs and private liens are, as we go through the negotiation process, we can tinker with this number and our net will automatically be updated. So if we've gone from a $90,000 demand, uh, we've, we've had some back and forth with the defense attorney and we've decided to settle the case for $60,000, all we have to do is change that at the top and our client net will automatically be updated. So what's helpful here is that if you're in a mediation or you're having a back and forth discussion with a defense attorney and your client, you can enter these numbers in once and then you only have to change really the, the first number and it'll tell you what it is, 50. It automatically updates you here. Okay, so that's the basic column and I hope it's fairly straightforward. Let's then take it and expand it back here and let's look at this column that's called reverse. The basic column starts with the settlement amount and the answer that it gives you is the client net. The reverse column is the opposite of that. That's why it's called reverse. It wants you to start with the client net and it will tell you what the settlement amount needs to be to get there. So this scenario is your client says to you, listen, at the end of the day, I would be happy if I walked out of here with $30,000 in my pocket. And you wanna figure out what the amount needs to be to arrive at that take home amount for your client. That's, that's what's happening with the reverse column. So there may be scenarios where you don't need this column at all. You might only need to use the basic calculator. And if that's the case, you don't have to worry about it at all. Um, but if you wanna use the reverse calculator, you certainly can. Now, before I start talking too much about the reverse calculator, let's notice that a lot of stuff carried over from the basic calculator into the reverse calculator. And note how many red cells there are in the reverse calculator, because remember, red cells are cells you cannot edit. If you try to edit them, the spreadsheet is gonna throw an error and tell you you're not allowed to edit them. So what the reverse column is saying is, well, you told me over here in the basic column that the costs were $5,000, so I'm assuming that is the same when we're doing a reverse calculation. Same is true with Medicare liens, uh, or I'm sorry, with any of our liens. You told me over here that the Medicare lien was $3,000, so I'm assuming that the Medicare lien is still $3,000 when we're switching the calculation around. So 
If there comes a time when you're using this reverse column and you want to change one of these numbers, for example, you want to change, um, I don't know, that you want to lower the costs, you're going to eat a portion of the costs in order to let the client get the money that they want. You can't change it in the reverse column. You need to change it over here in the basic column, and then it will automatically move itself over to the reverse column. So let's see how this works. We're going to go down into client net. The client says, I want to make 30,000, I want to take $30,000 home. So you type in 30 and press enter. And it does the calculation for you. It says, okay, if the client wants to make $30,000 and we know that we have $4,000 in costs, a $3,000 Medicare lien, a $1,000 private lien, then you're going to need to make $63,000 for the settlement. That's the, that's the amount that the settlement's going to need to be. Now again, that's assuming a $40,000 fee. And notice that 40, I'm sorry, not $40,000, that's assuming a 40% fee. And notice that the percentage here is um, something that you can edit. So if you're working in this situation where you're trying to figure out, based on the amount that the client wants to take home, what you need to be, you could change the percentage here too. So you could say, well, let's, let's for them to take home $30,000, we're gonna need to settle the case for $63,000 and change. That's too much. So let's lower our fee. Maybe we're gonna take the fee instead of going all the way down to 33 and a third, maybe we take the th fee down to 35%. Again, you're gonna get, you're trying to edit this. Are you sure you wanna do that? Yes, I know I wanna do that. So you change the fee to 35%. Now you only need to settle the case for $58,000. And you can keep playing with this number and with this number until you come up with a scenario that's, that's settleable. All right, hope that all makes sense. Um, and let's expand this out a little bit more. Now over here, the second thing that we talk about is a log of the demands and the offers. This really stands alone. This is really separate and apart from the settlement calculator. So we could probably go ahead and hide this just to keep your attention focused here. All that's happening in the demand log is it's giving us an opportunity to write down what our demands were, what the offers were in response, and what the, what the number is in the middle. It's not doing anything fancy except as you're doing settlement calculations, giving you a place to have sort of a, a snapshot, a bird's eye view of everything that's happened in the settlement negotiation. So it's simple. Demand one, what was your initial demand? Let's say that the initial demand in the case was $150,000. Same story, you don't need to enter uh, dollar signs, commas, or decimal places. Just say 150 and press return. Oops, it's not right. It's not right, we're not entering. Boy, if I could just read the column headings, I'd be in good shape. We're not entering an amount there, we're entering a date here. So today is October 13th. Um, the date is not calculating anything for us. It's just for your reference. So if you're using this sheet on an ongoing basis throughout your case, if you wanna pull it up and be able to look back at the history, then you, you can have the date. If you don't care about the date, you can leave this column blank. Here's the amount, this is what I wanted to do earlier. Here we're gonna say the amount is 100,000, I'm sorry, $150,000. And now you don't need to enter in the dollar sign, the decimal or the comma. So $150,000 return and it's gonna automatically calculate that it's $150,000. Now, over here, it's gonna calculate the mean. This is the space between you and your uh, opponent. Obviously, since you haven't entered in an offer yet, um, then the mean is just $150,000. But let's say that today you enter a, a demand of $150,000, and tomorrow your opponent responds, and you two are really far apart, and your opponent says, um, that the offer in response to your $150,000 demand is $10,000. So you enter this in here, and what's being calculated here is the mean, the, the, the average between the two of you. So in other words, if you were to split the difference, this case would settle at $80,000. And that might give you a good sense of where you're going. Um, maybe it doesn't, it's just for your information. Um, it just sort of gets you to a place of understanding what's going on. You just keep on going with this. So let's say that uh, the next day, or, or let's say it's a week later, so 10, 21, you talk to your client and you respond that you're gonna move from your $150,000, you're gonna get into a five-figure demand. So you're gonna demand $99,999. $99, 
and your opponent writes back the next day and says, well, thanks for that demand. Um, you came down 100, I'm sorry, you came down $40,000, so we'll come up $40,000. We'll enter, I'll give you an offer of $50,000. Um, obviously, you see the mean has gone down. It looks as if the case is getting less valuable as the settlements go on. So now you might take this knowledge, this mean, uh, you might see where things are going and you might change your strategy a little bit. So the next day now you're going to enter a demand rather than letting that continue to slide. You're going to say we're only going to move down to $90,000. And your opponent might say, well, in that case, we're only going to come up $10,000. And now you see that the mean is staying about the same. We haven't moved much. There, there's not much, the, the numbers are crunching tighter, um, but you haven't really changed where it looks like this case is gonna end up. So let's say that you and the defense attorney, and now again, you have all this data right here, you can look at it. And you get on the phone with the defense attorney and you say, listen, we've been going at this for a week. We're going back and forth. We're not really making a whole uh, ton of movement here. Um, Let's just, let's just cut the chase. Why don't I move from $90,000? My next demand will be um, $80,000. And the defense attorney says, that's fine if that's gonna be your movement. I'll offer $75,000. And then you can come up with a number here. This is just a placeholder for you to put up, put where the case ultimately settled. Let's say 1027, congratulations. Uh, the two of you settled for $77,000. That's all that's happening over here. There's nothing fancy going on here. Again, I built this out of what I use. And as I'm looking at my settlement calculations, I like to be able to have in one place what's gone on back and forth. So I use these two parts independently, they don't, they don't work with each other at all. But when I'm doing settlement calculations, I like to know what the history was and vice versa, as I'm deciding what my next demand is gonna be, sometimes I wanna run these numbers. So in other words, let's say that we're at this place here. Let's delete all this data out. And let's say, let's say it's, it's October 21st and I need to figure out what my next demand is gonna be. Um, well, let's see, I can tell that I entered a demand initially of $150,000 and I can come over here and I can say 150 and on $150,000, my client was gonna net $82,000. And then I can say, okay, let's see what would happen on that $10,000 offer. Boy, on that $10,000 offer, my client's gonna have a negative net. Now we all know that you can't have a negative net and you'd be doing something to adjust these liens, you'd be doing something to adjust the fee. But you see, um, your client is not gonna walk away with money in your pocket unless you do something with the, with the costs or the fees. So $10,000 obviously isn't even gonna cover where we are in terms of um, our, our lien and the fee. Uh, so okay, now I'm in a place where I need to decide what my next, amount, what my next demand amount's gonna be. I might start playing with numbers over here to come up with that. I might be looking at the mean and saying, well, the mean between the two of us, the average between the two of us is $80,000. Let's just see. On $80,000, my client gets $40,000. Boy, that might be a number I wanna run past my client. And it might be a reserve price that I wanna have in the back of my head that I know um, this is the place where my client and I are gonna kinda work towards. And then if I'm gonna work towards $80,000, maybe I'll enter my next demand down to $100,000. And then again, I can come over here and I can say, what does my client take home on $100,000? $52,000. So again, it's, it's not doing anything earth shattering. Um, nothing that's going on here is, is numbers that you can't do with just your regular calculator or even with a piece of paper and a pencil. It's just, again, tools that make it easier for you to do this. Um, we've had some of these that we, we, we worked on these calculators where the settlement was a little bit more complex. There were, there were lots of things going into the calculation and, and it got a little bit longer than just 14 rows of data. 
And if you have something like that, I can certainly help you with that. But being able to take this with you and make those calculations quickly, or being able to have those things when you're talking to your client on the phone and ask those numbers quickly sure makes things easier. So I hope this is helpful. I know that video was longer than I expected it to be. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. If again, you don't work for Probanic and Probanic and you want a copy of that spreadsheet, feel free to reach out and I will be happy to give it to you. All right, thanks for your attention.